first one we've got is a match cut. And basically what you've got to do is, and then you'll be, you'll be in a different location. Simple. Okay, so the first one is quite self-explanatory. First of all, you need to get your two clips in the timeline. The first one and the second one. And then you just need to find where they match. So for example, on this one, actually, because these two are slightly different perspectives, that one's a bit more angled and also the lighting is different. I'm going to have to try and match the lighting and also the angle to make the cut as seamless as possible. Hopefully you don't have to do this, but I am going to have to. If I go over to where the bottle is in the air somewhere, so there's upright and make a cut and then do the same thing on this side. Go to where the bottle is upright, there, make a cut. I can cut these together and it's match cut. But like I said, I'm gonna have to make a couple of changes here to make it actually match. So bear with. I think that'll do. I've matched them close enough that it's not a major change, but when you've done the match cut, this is what it should look like. Match cut, and basically what you've got to do is, and then you'll be, you'll be in a different location. Simple. Now, next one is a camera shake. You've seen the camera shake before in the, set, in the, in the effects in DaVinci. You just do this. Okay, so for this tutorial, what you need to do, well, actually you've got two options to be fair. So you can either do it manually, which obviously uh, is just a little bit better. You've got a little bit more freedom or there's actually already a camera shake option over here, which you can drag into the, uh, in the between the two and lengthen it or shorten it as much as you like. And then you'll have your transition. But if you want to have a bit more freedom, you can go ahead and delete that one and go up to Toolbox and search for Adjustment Clip. And I, what I found works well is having it five frames on the starter clip and then eight frames on the other side. So five from to the left and then eight to the right. Then on the Adjustment Clip, you've got to add on the camera shake. So go over to Open Effects and search for Camera Shake and add that on. And now with these settings, because like I said, you get a bit more freedom, you can do this however you want. But I start the motion speed and scale at zero, so there is no shake at all. And also the motion blur at zero. And I start the pan, till and rotation amplitude where it is. I head to the center where the two clips align. And then I basically just up these all the way up, these amplitude settings all the way up. I put the motion blur all the way up and I put all the speed scale and motion scale all the way up and then go to the end and put speed and motion scale back to zero. And then you should have something like this. Oh, I forgot to mention as well. Um, scroll down to blank handling and put reflect and then that will remove the black edges. Um, so yeah, make sure you do that otherwise it looks weird. And then you'll have a transition that looks like this. Now the next one is a camera shake. You've seen the camera shake before in the, set, in the, in the effects in DaVinci. You just do this. And then you're on a yacht. In front of the obstacles. Okay, so for the zoom transition, what you need to do is find where you want the zoom to start and also where you want the zoom to finish. And now this can be any length you want, but for the purpose of this, because I followed your tutorial, I'm gonna do one second. So if you go to the middle where you've made the cut, where you want the two to cut together, you can either hold shift and go back arrow and that'll skip one second, or you can just start typing minus 100 and you can see up here, it'll go minus one second back and click enter and it'll go to the exact same place. I always just do shift and backwards. So this is where you want it to start. So I'm gonna cut that there. You can either use the blade tool or whatever keyboard shortcut you're using and then go back to the middle, go one second afterwards and do the exact same thing. And now you have our two clips separately. Now you wanna drag the zoom to clip upwards and then extend the zoom from clip across so that they overlay each other. Highlight both of them and then you can either right click and go to fusion clip or use your shortcut, which in my case is F or create fusion clip. And then when that's done, you'll then be able to click on the fusion button and go over to fusion. Now, if you don't know how to use fusion, I have a link in the description on all of my tutorial videos for a playlist of uh, basically all my tutorials and that includes basics and fusion. But basically what I like to do to organize this is to find which clip is after and put it up here and which clip is before and put it down here. Now median two, I'm gonna assume is after, but you can find out by those two little buttons here. If you click the second one, 
then it will appear on the screen. And if I put, click the second one on this one, you can see the before appears on the screen there. So I can swap these around. You can rename them if you want by right clicking and go to rename so you can keep it organized so you don't think, like, lose where you are, but I'm not gonna bother. It doesn't matter what order you do this, but I'm gonna go to the start of the clip on media in one and I'm gonna shift space and search for transform and add that in. And then up here on the size and scale, I'm going to set a keyframe on the size and I'm going to skip forward to where the clips change, which is, oh crap. Okay, wow. It's okay. To find where the clips change, you need to make sure on the media out, you have the second one selected. And then it means you can see both clips on the timeline. So they change here. So on this frame here, I'm going to change this size to two, just to double it. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but opposite on media in two. So shift space and transform. And then media in two needs to start here. And it needs to start at 0 0.5. And then towards the end of the clip, it needs to zoom in to, well, it would help if I set a keyframe, wouldn't it? Keyframe, end of the clip and zoom in to one. And then also on this one, because of the fact that obviously when it zooms in, you can see obviously the outside. What you need to do is change the edges to mirror. You can use any of the other ones, but mirror is the one that always works and what every other tutorial on YouTube will tell you. And then you also wanna make sure that on both transforms, so the transform for the after clip, you go to settings and select motion blur and the transform for the before clip, go to settings and click motion blur. And then you're gonna to want to use spline on these two because otherwise they'll be choppy. And you wanna open up your spline editor up here. And this is basically easy ease. So on the first transform, which is our boat, you can click on the transform to so make sure it's a tick and then click on this little button here, which will zoom both of these to fit. You want this to be smoother at the beginning. So it will start at one and then slowly move its way up until the very end, it quickly changes to two. And then on the other one, you want it to do the opposite. So you want it to quickly change from one. So we'll do that as a quite a harsh cut and then smoothly change into 0 0.5. And now you should have a smooth zoom transition. Then you're on a yacht in front of the, 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 the Royal, Atlant <laughs> Royal Atlantis somewhere, somewhere there. Anyway, the next one is this. And that is the fourth one, just simple mass. I'll show you how to do it. So you've got your footage and you've got your before footage. You need to layer them on top of each other and try and make it so that when the before footage ends, this footage is completely blacked out. Or, oh, and hopefully at the same time, when the camera moves starts, this starts coming across and then it's blacked out. So when the camera moves starts is roughly there anyway, which seems to have lined up like perfectly. You then, with the top footage selected, want to click on it and head into Fusion. And then when you're in Fusion, make sure these are that's bit in. In Fusion, go to the start of the clip and select this little polygon tool here. And then select Invert so you can see what you're actually masking. And then you can start masking out the object that you are wanting to mask out. So you can click and drag to create these curve points. Hold control to just edit one side of the curve point at a time rather than editing both sides of the curve point. And then collect these all the way around and then click invert again to see what it is you're actually masking. Now a good thing with this polygon tool compared to the masking tool within After Effects is that you do not have to click a keyframe every single time. Like you don't have to click a keyframe at all. It automatically adds a keyframe down here for the polygon tool. So now you can just go frame by frame and adjust the keyframes accordingly so that this object is fully masked out like so. So now we have it fully masked out. As you can see, it's very harsh lines going and it doesn't really fit properly. So what we can do with that is heading back into Fusion with the polygon tool selected. We can adjust the soft edge. So if we move this, you can see it blurs the edges a little bit. So then it means that it's blended in a little bit more with the background. And of course, as you can see here, we can see a bit too much of the background. So you can go in and adjust the points. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, as long as the mask is perfect. So the mask needs to be perfect, but the actual 
like image itself. So you can see in the background there, there's a bit more stuff. So you can just go through and fix anything that you can see that you don't want to see. Just to make this start a little bit better as well, I'm going to add a position keyframe so that this is out of shot to begin with. And then as the camera starts moving in, I can then make it come into play. And I can also click on this little tool here to adjust the spline position for it. So rather than it just being a straight line across, it can be a little bit smoother and I can add a bit of a curve to it. And actually, if I wanted to, I could adjust that position keyframe a bit more to make it move a bit faster because it's a very slow, very slow process. So if you control R, this opens up the speed graph thingamabob. You can add a speed point and make this a tad faster, which will then mean I have to adjust the end point for the clip beforehand. And if you right click, you can also go to the real time curve, change this to speed rather than frame. And you can then adjust where the speed changes so that that isn't just a straight dip and instead it curves into like smoothly transitions into the speed rather than uh, just being a sudden if you, if you know what I mean. And then you have a transition like this. Pretty simple, pretty cool. And now quickly, I've now got a React channel where I judge and watch short films on YouTube. So if you want to do watch that and support me on my second channel, then link in the description. Go subscribe, watch, watch stuff with me. Watch it now, do it. But now moving on to the fifth one, it's this. Um, it's got quite a few components. It's got tracking, it's got freeze framing and then resuming it. So if you watch my clone tutorial bit, then it's got some of that. It's also got some masking. And also zoom chat. It's basically got everything in this video in one. So it, it's going to be a longer video. So if you want to know how to do this, which went viral a while ago, then let me know and I'll do it. So technically this is four tutorials, but five looks better in the title. So.